Hello, my friends. This is the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twin Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. And that's Not Just Blowing Smoke. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Cooper's in my head. Bit of sweet smoke flying through the air. It's the way I feel. Smoke it Master, right? And uh, Lisa and Bree from the 724 Lounge. And they're all coming via Skype from their own undisclosed locations. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How is everybody doing? Yeah. Excellent. Now, this is how uh, the podcast is going to work. The first half of the show, we're going to review a cigar. The second half of the show, we're going to review a pipe tobacco. Um, this video and audio that's being recorded on Facebook is going to be edited and put into a, uh, audio format that will be available on Monday on, uh, um, Podbean, Spotify, all the places you get the podcast from. Um, so this is like the raw footage from which the final podcast will be taken, uh, Obviously, we're not all together, so Kendra can't make us all cocktails. So Ooh. we all had to do it ourselves, people. Right we all had to do it ourselves. And I got home with basically enough time to unpack my bag, run, get the ingredients, throw them into my glass, and I hope I did it right. And we're starting off uh, with our cigar review, doing the My Father, Les Bijoux, Box pressed torpedo. It is a Nicaraguan hero, wrapper binder filler, all Nicaraguan, six and one eight by fifty two. This is a wicked popular cigar at Twins, and it's been around for a while. The Le Bijou line, uh, line, the original blend was done by uh, Jaime Garcia it, to honor his father. Uh, the very, very popular Don Pepin Garcia. Uh, and Pepin uh, added the 1922 to the name uh, to honor the birth year of his father. So that's a little bit about, uh, about this cigar here. Um, and we are pairing it with a rum-based old-fashioned. Kendra, are you there, Kendra? Is she there? I'm here. You're here. Okay, very good. She's there. Kendra, talk to us a little bit about what an old fashioned is. Oh, an old fashioned very simple. You have sugar, bitter, your spirit, and then an orange peel. And most like a cherry added on, but the original was not the cherry. So really um, it's a pretty misunderstood cocktail. So I say that again in establishment, but but really it, it's those simple ingredients. And I think the ladies on um, myself, Bree, Lisa, we're doing a different version of that. We're doing mm -hmm. it with the with chocolate bitters and okay. green marnier. So that way we have a little bit of um, a good pair of All right, very good. Um, Mine. Give a is, shout out. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go ahead, Kendra. I see that. Mikey Ten Beers is watching. Hey, Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi. <laughs> All right. What did the, what did the rest of you do? What did the rest of you do for your uh, old fashioned cocktail? Lisa, why don't you start? Well, I used Appleton. Um, mm -hmm. It's a Jamaican rum. Okay. And I, I used it with the chocolate bitters as well. So mm. it's similar to what Kendra and I think Bree are drinking. Okay. Same mom, obviously. So. Paul, what about yourself? Well, Kendra made mine for me before she left tonight, so I'm assuming. That's not fair. That's, that's not oh, fair. Oh, it, it is very fair, my <laughs> friend. It is. 
Oh. Very fair. Yes, favorite is. Thank you, Kendra. Damn. Oh, my God. Oh, ouch. Oh. Wow. So I'm we assuming... All... Well, Again, we all was... know Kendra's favorite is Brett. It's not you. <laughs> oh, Brett's on my A, so until he shows back up, I guess it's me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Nick, what about you? What did you do? I uh, used Bacardi 8 with an age drum. Uh, they use it, uh, They start using the 8s, and it goes up 10 in the, limit, uh, the Limitada and the uh, Special Reserve for more of a sipping wine. So I used that with sipping it. Sipping rum? With, yeah, so it's more of a sipping rum versus your Bacardi Clear um, mm-hmm. or your Bacardi Gold, which is more mm-hmm. for mixing. Okay. Um, so the Bacardi 8 I used for this old fashioned with aromatic bitters because that's all I have. And <laughs> it's good. I do it all the time. So I just, why am uh, I not surprised? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dave, <laughs> so, Dave, what about you? Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't go with rum. I just stayed with my four roses that I had before from last time, mm-hmm. um, on a budget. <laughs> so, that's what I'm going with. All right. That's cool. Now, Bree, w- what did you end up with in the uh, old-fashioned there? So, um, I have a realistic, and I um, hypothetically, if I were at home, I would have plantation in it. I still have that bottle from the, uh, um, the Christmas trade party. <laughs> yep. Um, but I also have the same as Kendra. Okay. So, we on par with Paul. <laughs> I had uh, happened to have a bottle of the Bruegel 1888. What is it? uh, The Bruegel 1888. What's that? Rum. From where? Bruegel. (laughs) (laughs) Show me the show me the label. We've had this on the show before. Ah, it's called Bruegel. From where? Yeah. I don't know where it's from. I got it from the liquor store. <laughs> it's a very, it's a, it's a very good rum. I put that with some Grand Marnier, some uh, uh, bitters in there, and I didn't have oranges, but I did have some cherries. So I put a cherry in it. It tastes pretty good. I had some uh, guidance from Kendra on how to put this stuff together, and um, I guessed at the, at the amounts. That's that's what, if you're if you're what's what's the ratio of rum to simple sugar or Grand Marnier or whatever you're going to put in there to sweeten it, Kendra? What do you normally do? So for so I know like Nick was saying how he likes to douse his like sugar. So typically it's a sugar cube and you douse it in bitters. But for us at at the bar we we make a simple syrup and you right. put like like a half there, maybe a tad less, mm-hmm. and about three dashes of then just stir a bitter. And then for the rum, um, the bar. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now that we've all talked about what uh, or not drinking, uh, what do we all think about uh, the cigar here? You want to? Say what you are tasting, what what kind of flavors are you picking up, and how do you think it's going with what you're pairing it with? So when I first lit the cigar, uh, I got a, I got some an initial mellowness, um, and then after a few puffs, then the peppers and leather started to kick in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd say a little bit of uh, earthiness, a little wood. Definitely a lot of leather and pepper. Uh, the mm-hmm. drink is actually hiding some of the leather and pepper and actually bringing out more of the sweetness of the cigar. Mm. Nick, what about yourself? A lot of the leather and sweetness. Tad bit of pepper on there, but I get uh, the drink is bringing out the leather and the sweetness in the cigar. Very smooth. Uh, excuse me, very medium full body on this cigar it's not a light cigar or a medium cigar i'd definitely say it's a medium full cigar on that mm-hmm. dave 
Um, I'm definitely getting some earth and leather. I feel like the the Four Roses is definitely bringing out the spice and the retro hail for me. Um, it's burning pretty well, um, and it's nice and smoky. <laughs> really good, Dan. Well, it is burning, so it it, it should be smoky, Dave. <laughs> That's what cigars do. <laughs> yes. I meant Lisa. smoky as in the volume of smoke, but whatever. <laughs> well, you have to tell people what you're what you're experiencing. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, what about you? So I've smoked this cigar several times, um, and I think it starts off smooth. Mm -hmm. I don't take the pepper yet. Yeah. Like, and I think with my drink, it's bringing out a little bit of chocolate, believe it or not. Mm. Um, I like it. I've, I've had it plenty of times, but it's a good cigar. <laughs> Bree, what about you? What do you think of this uh, torpedo? So, for me, um, right off the bat, just like Paul said, I got pepper. Um, for my, my first, like, five or six times. Um, I actually tend it as a full body cigar, um, which it is, but the drink actually almost makes it feel more medium body. Um, mm. it, it kind of brings out, I, I get a little bit of like the cacao notes, like Lisa's saying, and um, I think that the orange also kind of brings out um, a slight sweetness underneath the pepper. All right. Uh, I, think, I think the, uh, sorry, Dan, I think the bitters from the drink is actually hiding some of the pepper uh, and yeah. leather notes from the cigar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd have to agree with Paul on that one. Yeah. I get a I get a lot of um, unsweetened cocoa on the cigar. I get some earthiness. There's, you know, a little bit of spice here. Um, medium body, maybe medium plus. Uh, it's a very smooth cigar. Uh, like I said, this cigar is really, really popular. Um, we have guys who buy this by the box for themselves at the bar and smoke the whole thing, thing amongst themselves. That's it's right. Amazing. Um, Lisa will know that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, I have the, um, the bitters in my mm -hmm. And I think it makes the cigar taste a little more creamy. With the mm -hmm. Is it, all right, so, Paul, you have the chocolate bitters in your drink, right? Do I, Kendra? No. No, it's just <laughs> the yeah. bitters. Uh, I, I have to ask her because she made it for me. It's the bitters, the orange peel, uh, mm -hmm. the rum, and what else? And simple syrup. Simple syrup. So, who else has chocolate bitters in their um, old fat? And Lisa. Oh, yeah. The ladies. Just the ladies. ladies. All right. So, I, I know Kendra doesn't want to talk about how the cigar tastes, but Brie, do you think that there's a, a creaminess to the cigar that might be increased by the chocolate, like Lisa is saying? Absolutely, there is. Like, like I was hurt before, I didn't really take a sip of the drink until I was about five or six puffs in. Um, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, almost getting to that point where um, it's like full pepper. And then once you take that sip, for me, it was when all the other notes started coming out. And that was when, um, I think right now is probably the peak of the creaminess and like the cigar rounding out um, so I'm alternating probably about like four puffs of the cigar with like the tip of the cocktail and it, it's making for the ultimate degree of creaminess and pepper so. now Bree, this is your first time on our podcast here um, you're one of these people at Twins who you, you do work up at the, at the uh, bar but really, you're more of a behind-the-scenes person. You're you're in charge of social media and everything. You want to kind of introduce yourself to the audience, say a little bit about what you do at Twins, and uh, maybe what you do outside of Twins. 
that you feel comfortable sharing. I guess that would be nothing. I guess not. <laughs> she froze. Somebody send her. She froze. Uh, text. She froze. So you know, we'll wait. We'll wait to see if if they're able to come back and and get into that. But um, uh, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk about too was you know a little bit of um, you know what was going on at, at Twins. You know, we're open for curbside service. And uh, that seems to be going pretty well. People are getting more and more used to that way of doing things. Um, calling up, asking for what you want, paying for it, and then coming down and picking it up. Um, and that's going great. Something else that's happening is that uh, Kurt, Kendall, and Sean have asked us as not just Blowing Smoke, the podcast, if uh, we would host um, cigar events, virtual cigar events for them. And, of course, we said yes. Um, and we don't have a ton of details right now, but we are looking to do our first uh, virtual cigar event at Twins uh, with Ashton. We're going to have uh, the lovely Lauren Ferraro on the show with us. She's been on the show with us before. And uh, we'll be interviewing her, talking about Ashton, Ashton Cigars. And we will be announcing uh, uh, some specials that Twins will be offering uh, through the curbside pickup service that people will be able to take advantage of the week following uh, the podcast. And there might even be some specials that are available for you who are watching the show Um Live, we're still working on that, trying to work out what that could be and how it would work. But I'm pumped about that. I'm pumped about you know uh, trying new things. This is this is one of these times in business where I think you realize uh, to really the really successful people, the people who are going to make it through this, um, are going to be the business owners who um, are willing to adapt and change and get creative about how they do things. And I'm really excited that Kurt is, you know, on board with that and he's leading the company that way. I'm very, very pumped about that. Um, what do you guys think? I, how important is creativity, especially in times like this? You don't know when something like this is going to happen. And, Changing your business model to adapt to the to what's available to you, like doing curbside service, I think is something that's really important. I don't know that everybody's been able to do it, and I don't know that everybody's going to make it out. But I know it's going to be the creative people who make it. What do you all think? Well, I think this uh, the opportunity to do an event like this uh, will open us up to a whole new audience as well. Yeah. Uh, and whenever we do an event, uh, you know, Kurt, Bree, John, we, they, they go all out to let uh, our customers know about it through all different social media avenues. So mm -hmm. by doing the virtual event through the Not Just Blowing Smoke podcast uh, will serve two purposes. It will give people uh, a reason to watch our show, uh, take advantage of the specials, um, but also be able to actually have an event to uh, partake in where otherwise they wouldn't. So I think it's going to be a win-win. What do you think, um, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm on like my third, Dave, my third what do you uh, think? rum fat. Uh, my, uh, yeah, so just kind of, I'm just kind of okay. enjoying the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. You, you can't be drunk when you're on the show. You have, you have to get know. drunk I'm after far, the show. I'm fucking okay? drunk. I'm just saying. Uh -huh. I'm just... I just <laughs> can't see or think. Yes. I don't, we, yes. It's not every day that I get to sit by with a rum fashion and, and smoke a beiju here. So, you know, I'm just trying to enjoy the moment a little bit. But, yeah, definitely on what Paul was saying, you know what I mean? Being, you know, the businesses that have to adapt and overcome in situations like this will 
you know what I mean, will prevail, I believe. And with us, uh, with Bree and Kurt and Sean and everybody giving ideas on social media and not just blowing smoke and telling the customers, it's, it's, it's a great thing. And we're reaching a new audience. And once we get back, it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be uh, great for the business, great for us, great for everybody. Bree, as the social media person, what, what do you think about uh, this whole thing? About I know that the, this whole aspect where we've all of a sudden been told to get creative and figure out ways to do new things has been exciting for you. How's that made you feel? Has that made you feel like maybe has, has that increased the importance of your role to the Twins team? I would definitely feel like we're, we're more busy than when the shop was open open. Mm. Um, yeah. And I mean, it's because um, and collaborate and pull together. Like, um, Dan and I, we've been working on kind of just like figuring new methods to kind of keep the same, same events and like community aspect place and, you know, like Nick, Sean, Sean Paul, Kendra, like all of us kind of like bringing our expertise to the table and then it's kind of up to the background people to portray it and put it out there and um yeah just it's, it's like a, a work in progress but it's really Definitely. exciting in my opinion it's an opportunity yeah i definitely agree with that definitely agree with that um why don't we do uh one of the regular segment cigar confessions. Is this and one going to be more of a rant than a confession, or? Well, it's <laughs> this. This isn't going to be so much of a of a rant. But um, be before I get to that, you know, I, I think I just need to say how well that this cigar is uh, burning for me. It's got a great burn line. The ash has been fantastic. And um, I haven't had to worry about relighting it or touching it up. So the construction of this is really on point. Um, it looks like everybody else is having similar experiences. But, you know, one of the, one of the things that um, I love doing uh, as I smoke a cigar, especially something like this, is to do something called retrohaling. And retrohaling is the... Um, practice of when you've drawn the smoke into your mouth uh, to exhale it through your nose. And this isn't about breathing it into your lungs and then breathing it out. C cigar smoking is a tasting and smelling thing, not a breathing thing. You'll pass out if you try and breathe this stuff. Um, but your olfactory senses, i.e. your sense of smell, your nose, is organically and intimately connected to your sense of taste. And your taste will pick up a whole bunch of different things and get uh, heightened versions of the things that you're tasting on your tongue when you retrohale your cigar. I, here's my confession. I love doing it. I do it all the time. And I don't understand why other people don't do it with cigars. Because oh, some people can't it do it. Can't or won't. Like Probably won't. But for a, for a long time, I couldn't. I just couldn't. I wouldn't. I, I, you wouldn't. That's what you mean. You wouldn't. Well, I tried in the past, <laughs> and I couldn't do it. I was too afraid to do it because I kept inhaling the smoke, and it was just it was destroying me. But then I got the hang of it. I, stopped, I was smoking light cigars, and I was able to do a, smoke in the pipe, but never was able to do it smoking cigars. So tried it here and there and then i got the hang of it and i just every cigar i do it now i retrohale and i probably do it every other drawer of the cigar and it gets more and more taste through that cigar i get more and more flavor out of it mm -hmm. it's a great it's a great thing to do if you can't do it you should definitely try it and get used to doing it 
All right. So, Nick, you yes. have just admitted <laughs> that that you it was, uh, it, was you froze, it was brother. You froze. You're frozen. Oh, I froze. All You're right. frozen. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up where Pasta left off here. Go ahead. So, <laughs> oh, he's trying to call back in. He's he's jumped in. All right. So I'll just say real quickly that I never really used to retro hail that much, um, mm -hmm. but I have since I started working with people. To be honest with you, I'm not picking up price off the phone. Paul, you're uh, you sounding really, really faded right now. Is that because you just called in? I don't know. Uh, Maybe. Can you hear me now? Uh, I can hear you now. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was just saying that uh, I, if I'm not picking up any spice off my palate from a cigar, I'm definitely going to be picking it up from the retro hail. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. And specifically if, uh, the drinks that we have will help to enhance a lot of those flavors that, that we have from the retrohale as well. So I definitely retrohale a lot more than I used to. Yeah. So, Nick, what I was trying to say before I apparently froze myself yes. was that you, you admitted two things. One, <laughs> you know, you, you didn't know how to, to retrohale without inhaling the smoke. And you, were, and you were afraid... To, to do it lest you pass out on the floor and perhaps ask a question about your manliness how did how did you how did you get over that how did how did you work your way through that to to do it because uh, i think there are other people out there who don't retro hail who have those same fears um I did it I, when I first started doing it. I only did it on lighter cigars. I couldn't do it with like a Knuckle Dragger or an AJ Fernandez or a Factory Fifty Seven uh, from Seven Twenty Four. I couldn't do it with stronger cigars because it was it was just too strong. It was too too much for my nostrils to handle. So I started doing it with lighter cigars. Your nostrils. My nostrils. Your nostrils. Your nostrils couldn't handle it. Okay. My my senses and my my adenoids couldn't handle it. So, <laughs> oh, Kenston, she's back again. All right. Hey. Hey. So I started off with just lighter cigars and started going from there and doing it a little bit, doing it lighter and lighter. And uh, then I eventually elevated my game to more heavier cigars. And now I'm doing it with everything. Mm-hmm. Dave, what about yourself? Hey, Danny, you're frozen, um, buddy. You're frozen again, brother. Uh, so, go ahead, Dave. You got the floor. All right. Uh, well, I smoked cigarettes for almost thirty years, so retro hailing was just something I did. Uh, um, so, I've always always been able to retro hail a cigar. Uh, what was hard for me was not inhaling the cigar smoke because I'm used to inhaling the smoke. Uh, so I had to learn to hold the smoke in my mouth and, and blow it through my nose without inhaling it first. So that was, that was hard for me. But what, what, when I help people learn how to retrohale, I usually, what I think works, what I've seen work is if you take a, br a breath, a little bit of a breath first, and uh, a puff from the cigar, and then just exhale through your nose. So that way you already have a little bit of air or something in your lungs first to push out. And it seems to make it easier because then you're just trying to normally breathe. There you are, okay. Dan. Yep. I think my uh, surface was getting hot because... Uh, um, the way I had it set up, it wasn't able to, the air wasn't able to keep it cool. So I've had to tilt it a little bit. But I should be good, I think, at this point. Um, 
Lisa, do you retrohale your cigars? I'm curious. Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. Why on God's green earth would you not do this amazing thing? Because I'm she doesn't want to dirty her nose. <laughs> <laughs> And that. Yeah. Wow, that's that's the evilest laugh I've ever heard in my life. Well, I'm not as advanced as you guys are, so <laughs> maybe I'm just gonna take it easy. I never smoked cigarettes, so right. I really would probably die if I tried to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty content to <laughs> hit the way ahead. I know. Mm. Well, it really does enhance the tastes and flavors and even the even the smells of the cigar to, to do it. Um, I know that there are people who, for whatever reason, choose not to. But um, I've found for myself, it opens a whole other aspect of experiencing the tobacco. And so I will really want to encourage you people out there who are listening and watching the show, if you are not retrohaling, give it a try. Give it a try and see how things change when you do it. Rod says that um, it works also if you chew after you exhale and you can pick up extra flavors if you can't retrohale. And I would agree with that, too. Are you a chewer, Dave? I am definitely a chewer. <clears throat> yes. How did I know that was true? <laughs> All right. Um, let me see what I have here on my things here. So what is uh, the final verdict on this cigar? The Le Bijou 1922 Box Press Torpedo. The cigar on its own definitely has a lot of earthy leather, uh, pepper and spice uh, with a little bit of sweetness. Uh, definitely a medium full uh, cigar. The drink is bringing out more of the earthy sweetness. I'm going to say that it's hiding some of the spice and pepper for me. Uh, uh, so it's bringing out a lot more of the, uh, the earth, wood, and uh, the natural sweetness of the cigar. Um, I really love this. I've been smoking this for a long time. Uh, probably the last, what, five or six years off and on. So I, I really, really like this cigar very much. Nick, what about yourself? Well, as a Nicaraguan Puro, that's what you said it was, right? Yes. As a, Nica as a Nicaraguan Puro, it's a fantastic You like point. it because it's Nicaraguan Puro. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um with the with the cocktail, you bring out more of the sweetness, and with the bitters that I use, I use aromatic bitters. It's bringing out more of leather tones in there, um, right? Some sweetness, and you definitely get the spice on the retro hail. And um, it's it's a fantastic it's a fantastic smoke. I've been smoking this for a long time, and um, it it's their flagship on my father platform. Uh, and it's a fantastic cigar. A lot of people buy it. And if you haven't had one, you need to have one. It's great. Dave, what do you think? Um, I'm really enjoying like the, uh, the earthy, leathery, a little bit of cocoa. Um, I do get a, a little bit of uh, maybe like a dark cherry from like the undertone. Uh, for me, my the, the full Wuros is, is really bringing out the retro hail and making it very spicy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very smooth cigar, a lot of room smoke. Uh, I, I love the aftertaste of the cigar. It's uh, all that, um, like that cocoa leathery mix is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I give it two thumbs up. I love it. We call that aftertaste the finish. That's what's called the finish of the cigar. The taste that's left in your mouth after it's done. Um, Kendra, you are a master of making old fashions. You make them out of everything. 
do you still like your old fashioned after having had this Le Bijou torpedo? I do. I would complimentary pairing for sure. Um, yeah, I feel like the more the the longer I've smoked the cigar, it's gotten smoother, and I'm enjoying the pairing more. <laughs> Initially, I thought it might pair better with a scotch, probably because of the spiciness. I I feel like the the sweetness of my drink maybe wasn't the right pairing, but I think the more that I'm enjoying it, it's working better. Why are people calling twins after we're closed? <laughs> no idea, but you're frozen again, Danny. Uh. <laughs> um, Bree, your uh, mic is muted. Oh, there, it's not muted anymore. Oh, there we go. All right, Bree. So, what do you what do you think about the pairing? What do you think about the scar, young lady? Um, you know, I what I love about this particular cigar, aside from the beautiful aesthetic of the wrapper and the way that it acts, is um, as it goes along, that it's like that pepper it completely fades and it turns into something completely different. It's um, really smooth now, especially. In Kendra needs to mute her mic. All right, uh, Bree, you want to want to say that again? Yeah. So, um, what I was All saying, right. what I what I love about this cigar. cigar. We're still getting we're still getting a huge echo from you from uh, oh, multiple mics that are on it, and everything. Yeah. It, All right. Solved. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, aside from the wrapper, which is very, very aesthetically pleasing, and the ash, which I haven't had any problems with really having to relit the cigar at all so far, um, I like how the pepper is just enough to the background in conjunction with the cocktail, where now, um, I wouldn't even say it's complete creaminess, but it's just a smooth smoke. There's You don't get that unpleasant dry aftertaste that you get from some cigars um i i don't have anything negative to say at all about this smoke mm. well i like uh this cigar very much it's uh it's not it's not really so much complex as it is consistent it's those flavors of earth cocoa leather maybe a little bit of uh that uh uh, cherry kind of sweetness they were saying is all through the cigar from start to finish if you like uh, a medium medium plus cigar and um, you like that little bit of Nicaraguan spice you're going to really like um, this cigar here alright so what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to our uh, pipe tobacco review and what we're going to do is we are going to be smoking this squadron leader squadron leader is uh tobacco by samuel gaweth and this is one of those this is one of those tobaccos that is hot right now um, is it? it is hot everybody wants to get this tobacco um, it's very, very hard to find. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, it, when they show up at, uh, online websites, it's off gone almost as soon as the stuff gets there. It's very, very hard to find. And this is, uh, uh, one of Gawith's, uh, most popular blends. It's one of their most popular English blends. Let me um, give you a little bit of information about this tobacco. There's nothing uh, that's written on the tin, on the front or the back, about this tobacco. It has too many warning labels. It has lots of warning labels, yes. But um, if you go to the uh, um, tobaccoreviews.com website, it has something that... Uh, probably was on the tin at one point. It says um, bright and dark Virginia's blended together with Latakia and Turkish leaf to make 
this a cool medium. Squadron Leader is an English blend. It's named in honor of the Royal Air Force pilots in England who flew the uh, Gloucester Gladiator biplanes in the early days of the Second World War. Um, Samuel Gawith has been making tobacco since 1792. Um, there's no flavoring in this. It's a ribbon cut tobacco. It comes very, very wet in the tin, just opening it up. It needs some drying time before you light it up. Uh, otherwise, you're going to really struggle with it. And um, for the pairing with this, um, Kendra, the potion master, decided on oh. a various bl various bottles of Founders um beer you want to talk a little bit about the, the founders blends that we're going to be smoking drinking here yeah so let's see i know that there's backwoods bastard well, that's what i have ale. yep that's and fitting <laughs> and Lisa has Dankwood, which was a red IPA aged in bourbon barrels. Mm -hmm. um, Dave has a strong ale aged in rum casks. Mm -hmm. and Barrel runner. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then Paul and Bree have a barley wine. Um, what else? Oh, uh, Dan. <laughs> Dan has the old curmudgeon's better half. And I don't recall which one that what that was aged in, but I know it's old curmudgeon. Um, I think I think it's maple. That one that one has a maple finish. And for me, I'm drinking Guinness twenty two hundredth anniversary, which is a higher mm -hmm. HD Guinness. Oh, that sounds nice. So had to be different. I did. <laughs> Kendrick, did you give me this because you thought that looked like me on the label? <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it's you and Mandy. Yes, eating absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> hence, wow. hence, the, hence the name Old Curmudgeon Dan. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, grumpy <laughs> to, open, to open this up, to open up this uh, bottle of Founders, I'm using this uh, uh, very unique bottle opener that I forged. <laughs> Forged myself. Oh, serious. We got I an old Ron Swanson. Here. All right, yeah. <laughs> we got an old Let's Ron Swanson. Ah, oh, you don't put it in a glass, huh? Well, you know, you work with what you got. I suppose. I got. I got the. Uh, any glasses? I had a. I had to go I get have... myself a Stein. <laughs> All right, so what do you guys think of your beer and the uh, tobacco pairing? Go ahead, Paul. Knock it around. Well, the tobacco on its own, when I did the pre-light before we started, I got a, a tremendous amount of dried fruit right off the bat. Um, nice. Paul, your video's frozen. All right, let me call back in. All right. Nick, why don't you tell us about what you're tasting there? And the tobacco or the beer? The you know, tobacco. either would be good. Sure. Well, the tobacco, you're getting some... Tobacco notes. Had, yes, I, yes. Some, I don't know why, but I'm getting some tobacco notes. But in um, when I first lit it up, you get a really good... Um, a lot of spice in the retro, and you get some really nice sweetness out of it. Um, but when... I take a sip of the beer. It is <laughs> the beer. The beer. When I take a sip of the beer, it kind of it it blends everything together nice and evenly. Really nice complexity there. Excuse me. And um, you don't really get any one of the sweetness or the spice a lot. You don't get it like with it with because I had the tobacco earlier and with. With the tobacco in itself, you can kind of pick out and everything be presented at once. Um, with the beer, it's, it blends everything together really, really well. kind of makes it really complex. 
Mm. Uh, what about yourself? So the 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 barley wine is a very high ABV. Uh, has a lot of maltiness, uh, lots of, of, of hops, uh, lots of uh, intense fruit. So I think with the barley wine, it's actually hiding a lot of the sweetness from the tobacco. I'm picking up uh, a lot of earthy notes, uh, some nice spice on the retro hill, but that's pretty much all I'm picking up. I think the barley wine might be a little bit too much for the tobacco. Mm. Kendra, what about you? What are you thinking about this? So, I don't recommend a Guinness with this tobacco. I enjoyed it <laughs> more so yesterday. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure quite what it is, but I, I, I think that this beer is kind of just masking a lot of the flavors that I was picking up yesterday. I don't even know if I'm going to have that special retrohale today. Mm. Uh, you should retro and see if it comes back. Now, Bree, you got yourself a pipe for this podcast. You have been smoking a pipe for about 24 hours, and this is one of your first tobaccos, this tobacco that I have people calling for, people looking for, people asking for, who can't find it anywhere, and you are smoking it what do you think and how do you like your savinelli condale that darth piper talked you into (laughs) so i definitely was not anticipating buying i'm happy i did Mm. um this is my savinelli i i was drawn to that the long elegant design Mm -hmm. um it's as for the tobacco it's interesting because just like kendra um i'm getting completely different um, flavors than I did yesterday. Um, yep, I'm not sure if it's because of the cigar before and um, the cocktail, but my initial hit on um, this tobacco was beef jerky. It was good, it was good, but it was beef jerky. And um, it's kind of, I'm still getting the leathery aroma and I'm mm-hmm. still getting um, like smoky smoothness behind it, but um, the flavors definitely changed from yesterday. And I do feel like the beer. Um, it, it almost complements it in a way where I'm not sure if it's masking it or complement, mm-hmm. but it's, it's it's an admirable pairing. An admirable pairing. Very good, uh, David. What about you? Oh, sorry, it's just taking a pull off the pipe there. The um, my um. Found his barrel runner is going very well with the tobacco. Um, it's bringing out a lot of that um, mesquite uh, smokiness, or I guess uh, that spiciness you would get from like you know uh, uh, a pepper jerky. Um, it's uh, it's going really well. I think it's a good pairing. Good job, Kendra. Yeah, Kendra gets a little uh, love from Dave there. Nick, what about you? Oh, four. It's it's kind of blending everything together. You definitely get the pepper on the retro hail, but the sweetness has died down a little bit, and it's the the sweet pepper notes that you get from it are kind of blended together with the drink. The drink is a little on the heavier side um, and it is kind of masking it together at the same time, but it's as you continuously smoke the pipe, you're getting still getting some of the sweet and spicy notes in there too. So it's, it's good. I think this would be a little bit better with the cocktail. Yeah, I think you're right, Nick. I think the uh, the pipe tobacco probably needs a, a cocktail, maybe similar to what we had with the cigar, for us to be able to really enjoy the flavors of this tobacco the way it was meant to be. Yeah, like you still get you still get you know some some hints of sweetness, and you get the spice on the retrohale. But I think the the beer is is um, 
is a little bit it is a little bit too heavy for the tobacco. The tobacco for me is trying to keep up with the beer, and the beer is just so bold, so flavorful. It, it's just it's having a hard time um, keeping up with it. So. Mm. Well, my experience is a little bit different. I mean, when I uh, take a pull from the beer, um, the flavors are very, very strong. But that the the finish of the beer, uh, in my case, this old curmudgeon better half, um, really brings out the sweetness of the Virginias for me. And um, I'm really digging how it's pairing with this tobacco. Um English blends are not my favorite. I like them in, in small quantities, um, but uh, there's a there's a lot of uh, spice and pepper on the retro here, mm. and there's a nice uh, savory spice and uh, some sweet and sour uh, on the palate. Um, Oh, you can really taste the Virginias, I think. And the the did you say there was there was maple in my beer, Kendra? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I think I that's what. No, yeah, I'm mute. I'm mute. I don't want people to listen to me. I just want them looking at me. I just want to look good. Don't want to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the beer's really bringing out the uh, um, Virginia for me, and that's really, really nice, uh, smoking this tobacco here. Uh, I'm smoking it in this uh, fourth-generation church warden, and um, really, really enjoying it. For me, I think in this particular pipe, um, the tobacco is perform performing a little bit stronger than it would if it were in a bigger bowl for me. Yeah, I have a bigger bowl. I have a Trevi 3... Is it a Trevi 320? Yeah. That I have, so my bowl is quite big. So it's not... <laughs> so it's not as concentrated, I suppose. I have a very big bowl. I do. My bowl... My bowl is extremely... Uh, Girthy. Girthy. Of course. Mm -hmm. But I like big bowls and I cannot lie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we can't deny. <laughs> I cannot. So, you know, as we're like, what, a month into this whole COVID-19 shutdown stuff, where we've all been kind of trapped in our homes, um, one of the things that uh, we've been doing here that I'm sure lots of people have been doing everywhere is binge watching TV shows on Netflix, Hulu, oh, yeah. Amazon, or whatnot. What are some of the shows that you have been binge watching? Ooh. We've been binge watching uh, Ozark. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ozark, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, we're uh, almost through the uh, <laughs> second season. We've been binge watching it for the last week, and uh, it's a really a great series. If you haven't uh, haven't watched it, I recommend it highly. Yeah, I agree. My mm. wife loves that show. Um, I second that notion. Yeah, my wife loves that show. I'm kind of binge watching anything anime. Anything That's anime? <laughs> Did you watch Castlevania, Nick? I haven't. That's on my list. I've been. Right, uh, get, you gotta get to that. I've been catching so, up on One Punch Man and uh, My Hero Academia, Sao stuff like that. So, have you watched that. the Seven Deadly Sins? Seven Deadly Sins. I have not watched that one. Oh, that's, that's good. good. That's, watch that. a, that's a very uh, Nick show. Is yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. You would love it, Nick. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check that one out. Mm. Kendra, what about you? Are you binge watching anything? So I 
I also enjoy Ozark. I just finished season three, but another older show that I'm really enjoying is Vikings. Has anyone seen Vikings? No, I, I haven't. Sure it has that Game of Thrones vibe. Yep, yep, it does. Bree, what about you? What are you binge watching? Oh man, a lot. Um, <laughs> definitely. So I started, I started Ozark last week, and I'm obsessed with it for a start. Um, other than that, I've been binge watching a ton of horror movies on Hulu, um, particularly a bunch of movies by this production company called Into the Dark. <laughs> um, yeah, and other than that, I think just a lot of ancient aliens. Ancient go. aliens. Yeah. Ancient aliens. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there. They are. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, uh, X, any X-Files? I'm, I've been binge watching the X-Files. Look Dude, at that. I've, fro I've the, frozen again. You're frozen, bro. Oh, you're good. I'm good? Are you yeah. sure, Dave? Um, I've been yeah, binge watching the I've been binge watching the X Files. Yeah. Um, I'm on uh, season nine right now. I'm wicked Ooh. pumped to be this far into it. How many? Uh, how how many? Frozen. How many seasons did the X Files run for? Eleven in total. Nice. And that includes the new ones, the new seasons that they've done. Wow. Um, <clears throat> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, if you like. The, the horror stuff, Brie. If, do you like do you like the stuff like uh, um, uh, Ash versus the Evil Dead and stuff like that? I am uh, um, on the hunt for um, for more, more horror shows because I feel like you know horror movies. Yeah, they, they pop up, but yeah. recommendations yeah. for horror shows, absolutely, yes, please. <laughs> All right, How about, uh, uh, it one and two. <laughs> One and two, <laughs> the classics. Yeah. Yeah. You can also, uh, um, well, what is it? Uh, Deliver Us from Evil. Mm. Another good one. No, nope, haven't seen that one. There you any go. Of the, any of the rings? That? Any of the ring? The ring? Oh, that's like way, way, way long ago. Yeah, <laughs> of course. There you go. Those are, those are you classics. You know, the creepy hair, like. Oh, absolutely. Well, if you like the the classic horror stuff, one of the great shows to binge watch is Penny Dreadful. Have you ever seen that? I've seen that pop up on Netflix. That's Netflix, right? Yeah, Netflix has that. That's a very well done show. If you Another like that series. kind of stuff. Another good series is Dexter. Oh my one. goodness, Dexter is amazing. Yeah. Uh, Heather <laughs> says you should watch Shudder. Thank you, That's Heather. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I, I've heard, uh, um, I've been trying to figure out, um, I forget what movie it was, but I know somebody told me it's on Shudder, and I've been meaning to sign up for that platform just to watch that, but also, it's good to know that there's more out there. <laughs> oh, there's a bunch out there. But one of my favorite comedy horror shows <laughs> is... Stan versus the e Stan versus evil on there Hulu. That is a freaking awesome show. It is funny and it's and it's horrible all at the same time. It's great. <laughs> you need to watch that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, what's our uh, final verdict here on this Samuel Gawith? Um, squadron leader. Paul, what do you think? Is this your new favorite tobacco? No, it's not really, Dan. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I've been trying to, to uh, keep the beer at bay so I can enjoy the tobacco on its own. Uh, I'm, like I said, it's, it's got a nice, some nice dry fruit, some nice uh, uh, spice on the retro hail. I think the uh, my palate might be a little bit overblown with the cigar and drink we had before, so I'm not, maybe I'm not really picking up all the great flavors that I uh, expected this tobacco to have, but I still can pick up some of that nice spicy uh, sweetness from it. Um, I think it's really good. Now, you had thought that we were going to have the uh, uh, cocktail with the tobacco. Do you think it would have gone better with this, or do you think yeah. it would have gone better with the cigar? I thought I thought the cocktail would have gone better with the tobacco and the beer with the uh, cigar. I thought that's 
that's what I uh, that's my opinion. Nick, what about you? I think it really could have gone either way. Hi, hey, Nick. Nick. How you doing? <laughs> um, I think I definitely I would probably have to agree with Paul. The the cocktail probably would have went better with the tobacco because of the medium body of the tobacco. The beer probably would have went a little bit better with the cigar because the cigar is a little bit heavier. Um, you definitely get more of the heavier leathery notes in the cigar. And I think the beer would have been, I think it would have went well with the cigar. Um, it, for me right now with the tobacco, it kind of overshadows the tobacco a little bit. You still get, uh, some flavor out of the tobacco. You get some sweet notes. You definitely get some spice on the retro hail, but overall I would say probably not. Uh, I think the beer is a little bit too heavy. For the tobacco. Dave, what about you? I feel like it could have gone either way. I'm enjoying the pairing with the uh, beer with the pipe tobacco. Uh, I think it's bringing out the Virginias and <laughs> getting a lot of spice in the mouthfeel. Um, I'm enjoying it very much. I feel like it would be interesting to try it reverse. I think it would go just as well. Bree? Sorry, I'm all saying um, a lot of spice in the mouthfeel. Um, I, I do kind of um, wish I had a solid palate cleanser between the first bar and cocktail. And um, I, I think I would personally prefer a cocktail with this tobacco however i feel like the cocktail also went good with this cigar um i do i do feel like very soothing and it kind of rounds out all the flavors it, it might be kind of taking precedence after each puff mm -hmm. kendra what, what about you you're you're liking the pipe i know how do you think it's going with your <laughs> beer really drinking the beer too much anymore because i don't think it was an amazing pairing um mm -hmm. i thoroughly enjoy this tobacco, I love the leather notes that I get, and um, I am still getting the same retro hail as yesterday with no alcohol involved. Um, so that I would say is kind of like a like your granddad's after shave and body odor. <laughs> oh boy! I feel like it's I'm soaking my grandfather's sweat. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what hot. I think, people. Well, here, here's uh, uh, Lisa. <laughs> are you still with us? I'm still with you. Yes. What? Yeah. It, what's What's your thoughts on this uh, uh, squadron leader and what you're drinking? Well, you know how I felt about it earlier today. I yes, I do. I actually <laughs> helped me like it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um. It was a lot smoother tonight than it was earlier today, but this is also my first time smoking a pipe, so I don't know if that's just the reason why. It's, it's very foreign to me, so I'm trying to learn to like it, I guess you could say. But the beer definitely helped. Danny has left the building. Hopefully he comes back. Yeah. He lives on the edge of doom in, in Havel, right on the Merrimack River, and he's got a mountain of rock behind him. So it's hell for internet and cellular service alike. Well, I live in the woods, so can't be that. No, he lives nowhere near the city. He's on the outskirts. He's right near the Amesbury line. I am absolutely fantastically in love with this tobacco, though. This is definitely one of my top five now, though. How do you really? feel about that? The, the, the tobacco in itself, I had the tobacco earlier. I haven't had the squadron leader in a few months, and I wanted to refresh my memory on the taste of uh, the squadron leader. And I had some earlier, 
Uh, and it was a fantastic by itself. It was fantastic. You get a lot of sweetness, a lot of stewed fruits. You get an awesome retro hail with the spice. Um, I was describing it to Paul earlier as you get the sweetness up front and then the, the, the Latakia, the spice kind of pushes the sweetness out of, out of the picture. And the spice comes in on your palate and says, Hey, here I am. So I think, I think the the drink that I have, which is the the backwoods bastard, is a really good drink. I, I think uh, the drink on its own is really good, and I think the tobacco on its own is really good. Um, but together, I probably wouldn't go with it again. I'd probably go with something lighter, maybe an ale, um, maybe another cocktail or maybe even um actually you know what i'm gonna try a little uh bacardi eight if i could turn the ball around i'm gonna uh have some of this and see how it goes with the tobacco there you go why am i not surprised because you shouldn't be surprised <laughs> at this point yeah um i think i'm probably the only one then that really likes how the beer went with the tobacco and that may be really because do. it's sweeter a sweeter beer um, with that uh, maple to it. Um, that really goes well with the Virginias and kind of plays really well with it. Um, I don't think my beer would have gone as well with cigar, so I'm glad I'm having it with this. Uh, that said, I do think the cocktail would also have gone very well with uh, the tobacco here. Um, this is a nice kind of all day kind of English smoke. It's not. It's not a Latakia bomb that like leaves you going. Oh, I've just you know been uh, hit with a smoke bomb of Latakia. Um, but it's definitely there, um, and it's definitely a medium bodied uh, tobacco at best. Uh, so if you know, I have to drink the beer, which I think is a little bit over medium as far as its body goes and then wait a second or two. And then along with the finish of the beer, if I have the tobacco here, it goes really, really well. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's my experience with this. I, I, you know, like this tobacco a lot. Um, there are English blends that, that I think I like a lot better than this. There's, there's, you know, I think part of the mystique of Squadron Leader is that it's just so hard to get, <laughs> you know, but, you know, if you like English blends a lot and you want to smoke it all day without burning out your palate, Squadron Leader is one of the uh, things that you can get to, to do that. And uh, it's certainly top quality tobacco and everything. Um, again, I'm more of a uh, Virginia Perique guy or a burly guy so uh latakia is not my go-to thing anyway so don't you know take my you know comments as, as kind of downing the tobacco which is not normally what i do but i can tell it's really good quality stuff and um it's definitely worth it's definitely worth having you know i have my own tin i have my own tin of this stuff and uh, when I, when I want to smoke in English, this is one of the ones that I uh, go for. So uh, next week, if you're going to be uh, smoking with us again, we're going to be doing live at 7 o'clock next Friday. And that's April 24th at 7 o'clock. We're going to be doing a light evening uh, episode. And we're going to be smoking the Rose of Sharon Lancero. Whoa. Which is called Corn. Ooh. The Rose of Sharon Lancero. I'm very excited about that. That is a fantastic cigar. And Lancero is a, is a size of cigar that's very often overlooked. And I'm really excited that we're going to be smoking that. And along with that, we're going to be smoking Cornell and Deal's opening night. Whoa. Which is all Virginia tobacco. And uh, very, very nice. It's a great flake that highlights just what Virginias can, can bring to the table. 
in and of themselves. Virginia is a tobacco that's in almost every blend that there is. Um, but just on its own, it could be a really, really great tobacco. And so we're going to uh, look at that very popular blend from Cornell and Deal last week, see what all the fuss is about, and uh, whether or not that's something you want to have in your uh, tobacco cellar. But uh, from all of us to you, thank you for joining us. Thank you. You for smoking with us and uh stay safe stay thankful and stay smoky my friend you've been listening to not just blowing smoke the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge expertise and fun of twins smoke shop new england's premier smoke shop right to you wherever you are whenever you want it you can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is Not Just Blowing Smoke. Rolling with the top down, smoking on a fast cigar.